we're going to discuss a new topic. We're going to talk about the basics of chess. I believe most of you know about chess, but for some of you, let me get through the gist of it. Chess is a strategic war game in which you try to capture the opponent's king which means to kill the opponent's king. As you go through the long game, you should try to attack the other's pieces and the king, as well as defend and, uh, you know, do get a proper defensive wall around your king. First of all, let me show you the board of chess. So this is how a chess board looks like, guys. It's not necessarily looking like a war field, but it's just a game of chess. So this board contains 64 squares arranged in eight rows and eight columns. So you get it, eight into eight is 64. So this is where our medieval war takes place. So you may wonder why there are the alphabets and the numbers arranged like this. So, Professionals name each square so that whenever analyzing, it becomes easy for them. For example, when the queen moves here from here, we say that the queen moves from F3 square to the C6 square. So it's more easier than just telling the queen moves from this square to this square. It's better to analyze. Um, some professionals are so well versed in these names that they can even play a game blindfolded by just hearing what the, you know, uh, opponent moves. For example, the opponent will say queen to e6 and they will just, you know, visualize the board in their mind by using these numbers. So it's not necessary to, you know, memorize these numbers, but uh, when you're training, it's very easy to, you know, analyze the game. Next, we're going to learn how to set up the board. When it comes to setting up the board, it's very important that we learn where each piece goes when starting the game. So let's see each piece and where it goes on the board one by one in the order we learn them. First, we learn about the king. So I'm sure you can see a row named E here. You see this? So you put the king on the each ends of this row. This one. Okay, so we're done with the king. And next we need its companion, the queen. The queen, just like the king, is set up on each ends of the D column. Right next to the king. So the white queen goes here, while the black queen goes here. So the king is on E and the queen is on D. It's an important topic to know because some beginners might confuse the where to keep the king and queen. And if you're wrong about it, the game will just get spoiled. So just remember that the king means E and the queen means D. Next, we talked about the bishop. So the bishop actually goes near the king and queen. So each uh, team has two bishops. So the white has two bishops, as well as the black, which also has two bishops. Usually we place the bishops right next to the king and queen. Next, we're going to see the rooks. Each army has two rooks, either white or black. All the four rooks go in the four corners of the board, just like this. After the rook, we're going to see the knights. Just like the rooks, the knights are also in two 
for each army. And they are sandwiched between the bishop and the rook. Just like this. Finally, we learned about the pawns. Unlike any other pieces on the chessboard, there are numerous pawns, eight to be exact. And when setting up the board, these pawns create a line of defense for the other pieces. So this means, apart from the horse, we should clear the pawns so that the pieces can go in front of the board and attack. This um, pawns act, act as a line of defense. There are eight pawns for each army. We've done it. This is the proper way of how you set up a chessboard before you start a game. So this is it for today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and you learned more about chess. And I think you've got an interest for chess from now onwards. So thanks for watching this video and let's meet in the next one. Till then, stay tuned. Bye-bye.